Can you all hear me? Okay, like this, like this, testing. Good. Welcome. Is it not very loud? Are you sure? Are you sure? <laughs> not sure? Good. So, everyone take a deep breath, relax. Take another deep breath and relax. One more deep breath, or as many as you'd like, and relax. Now before I go on to talk about the topic that is today's topic, which is total surrender, die before you die, I want to make something else clear, which is maybe even more important. I talked to many people, obviously, um, about this kind of stuff, both in personal circles as well as in public teaching settings. And what makes the difference between someone who, shall I say, gets what I say, or gets more awake or more alive by what I say, right off the bat. What's the difference between someone that immediately feels what I'm saying and is able to let that uplift them and someone who it just doesn't quite hit home for. They don't quite feel what I'm saying. So a vibrational thing, all these practices, emphasize what works for you, feel really amazing as much as you can, feel really good, feel really expanded, have a really aligned viewpoint on life, see the way your higher self sees life. Those types of statements, for some people, only aggravates their lack of that type of alignment. So they might feel even more frustrated for a little bit, or they might feel even more deprived of connection when they hear these types of words, these types of promising qualities of consciousness. So what's the difference between someone that goes, yeah, I feel that, and someone that goes like, yeah, I'll try. <clears throat> okay, I'm amazing. Everything is working out for me. But they don't quite believe it. One of the most important differences is that you have to have one of those core points of view that you need to get straightened out first, which is along the lines of life is on my side. The universe wants for me what I want for myself. I'm worthy and capable of the things that I desire, of the states that I desire, of the qualities that I desire, of the type of self-expression that I desire, of the freedom that I desire, of the love that I desire, of the relationship that I desire, of the manifestation capacity that I desire, of the abundance that I desire, of the free flow in life that I desire. If you hear all these beautiful words, but they only aggravate your lack thereof, or seeming lack thereof, then there's a core misperception at the root of your experience, which is along the lines of the universe is a fraud. It's not working out for me. I feel betrayed. I feel unloved. I feel unworthy. So it's very important that you understand that the universe is on your side. That has to be a very intimate feeling. The universe is on my side. And with the universe, 
what comes with that is infinite possibilities, is infinite capacity, capabilities, an infinite I can. There is no place in this universe for I cannot. It does not exist. What you can do is you can create the illusion of I cannot, but it is still an I can. You can create the illusion of lack of worthiness, but it is still your ability and worthiness to manifest a reality in which it seems that you're not worthy. But there is not, fundamentally speaking, mechanically speaking, the mechanics of the universe are such that you cannot, cannot. You cannot, cannot. You can, cannot, but you cannot, cannot. You can, can, cannot, but you cannot, cannot. You follow? So you're always doing something. You're always creating some type of an abundance for yourself, some type of a manifestation, some type of an experiential reality for yourself. You're doing this all the time. You're doing this right now. And it's seamless. You're seamlessly, seamlessly abundant in whatever you manifest right in front of your eyes, right here, right now. You're very seamlessly abundant in whatever you generate as a feeling state for yourself right now. You're seamlessly abundant in whatever type of realization you're in as we speak. What state of mind you are in. What you are attracting to yourself as we speak. Because every point on the line of your timeline works as a magnet. So all the time you are attracting or generating or are on your way. If we're talking about a linear reality, you're on your way. You're well on your way. You're always well on your way to generating some type of an experiential reality that is going to look slightly or drastically different from what you know now. You're always doing this. You cannot stop attracting an experiential reality, an experiential timeline, a progression of some kind to yourself. There is some kind of a momentum going on within the magnetism that is your point of I am, your center of I am. Does that make sense? You are right now actively sending out and attracting to yourself particular types of realities, configurations of this universe that suit or belong to the vibrational output of your attitude, of your understanding of life. And one of the things that's most important to understand when it comes to attracting the life of who you are is that at the core of it, you need to know that life is on your side. If you don't, then no matter what I say, no matter what you affirm, no matter what you emphasize, no matter what vibrational game you play, if underneath that you believe that this universe just doesn't quite work in that way, or it's not meant for you, or you're somehow separate from this life, or you're isolated, or you're lacking, or you're not worthy, then it doesn't really matter within that context what vibrational games you play. It will start to end up feeling more like a struggle than like a success story, or like something that you enjoy in the long run. You might enjoy it for a day or two, or for the initial 24 hours after my meeting because you're all jacked up. But after that, being hyped up disappears. If your context of life is not on my side, I'm not worthy, I'm not capable, I cannot, I am limited, circumstances are real. If those type of core contextual beliefs that generate the context of your inner experience and your outer experience, if these remain intact and untouched, then the baseline of your life will remain untouched as well. And then what happens is that you become even more betrayed, feel even more betrayed. You generate the illusion of being more betrayed. You anchor in more of the conviction that life does not work in this way, that life does not work on your side or for you. So it's very important to have a look at the core feelings as to how worthy you are, how capable you are, how much life is on your side, how much the universe wants for you what you want for you. If you believe that, if you get those in alignment, then we can talk about the experience of ease and generating all that is within your field 
of desire, of passion, of inspiration, of expansion, very effortlessly, one moment at a time, one moment at a time, one moment at a time, one event, one item, one person, one experience at a time, but very swiftly and easefully. So many people that do these vibrational games or that sort of dabble in the practice of change your frequency or change your attitude or change your vibrational state of being, what happens is that they don't quite hit the core of their contextual beliefs. And then they get even more despondent. They feel even more like life is not working out. It does require hard work, like they don't quite want to be here. But those are all experiences. The experience of, I don't want to be here, except in rare occasions or when you're really at the end of your life's theme, where it's a natural process of weariness. But other than that, if you feel in any way that you don't want to be here, even though you know in the back of your mind, in the back of your heart, that you still have juice left in you, that there's still things to explore, then it means you've built up some kind of a resistance to the fact that you're alive, to the fact that life is the way it is. But that is because the way you have made life to be the way it is, is because it reflects the way you see or think or expect life to be the way it is. And this has everything to do with what you believe, what you expect, what you perceive, what you predict. So make sure that your core concept is that the universe wants for you what you want for you and that it is always actively responding to your vibrational output. And that if things are not seemingly coming to you effortlessly, it means you're keeping them at bay somehow with a belief that's out of alignment. That's the only way the universe can seemingly not give you what you desire is if you hold on to a belief that's out of alignment with this sense of self-worthiness, this sense of infinite inseparability with all that is, the sense of everything can happen, everything has already happened, and I can traverse this field of parallel realities effortlessly by simply shifting my attitude, my belief, my expectation, my thought. So get in alignment with those principles of infinite endless possibilities and that you are an extension of infinite endless possibilities. Therefore, how could you not generate and attract infinite and endless possibilities? Might as well be the type of possibilities that are in alignment with the things you are inspired by. How do you do that? You smile. Like, genuinely. You are happy. You are excited. You look forward to things, but without anxiety. You're in you are in an in anticipation of some kind. You're in that vibrational anticipation of some kind of miracle, the next most amazing adventure. You're always looking towards the horizon, but without the traditional sense of lack here and now. So even though you know you're perfect as you are here and now, and everything is already complete, you're still looking forward to the next thing, to the better reality, to the more crystallized, more transparent reflection of who you are, while knowing at the base of your being that life is on your side, that everything already happens, has happened, that everything is already established, that everything is already accomplished, that you are already perfect as you are, that nothing is personal, that everything is play, that everything is reflection of your vibration. Nothing is personal. It's all reflection of vibration. So when you start to feel good at the base of your being, then it even becomes slightly less important what you do, it still is important, but it becomes slightly less crucial what you do on the surface with your vibration because underneath that there is conviction, there is faith, in the knowingness that you are one with God, with the Creator, that you are an extension of the Creator, and that you therefore have all the capacities that the Creator has. And that therefore you can never be stuck, you can never be lacking, you can never be limited. And that life is indeed on your side because there is no one else to be on the side of. Because there is only one. One is all and all is one. So how can there universe not be on your side. 
It's not possible. That can only be possible if there's fundamentally two beings in the infinite vastness of the one. But there isn't. There's only the infinite vastness of the one expressing itself. So it's always on its own side. Well, how does that work? If this person wants this, but I want that as well, how do we do that? Well, you tune into the vibration where you know you are already fulfilled and somehow, magically, you will get exactly what you want. And assuming that they do the exact same thing, they get exactly what they desire too. There is an infinite abundance. There is no lack. How you can get fulfilled is not dependent upon how many objects there are in this room or on this planet. Because even though there's only so many objects on this particular planet, there's infinite variations of this planet with each having a limited set of items or things or events or experiences. But you see, there's infinite versions of that. So there cannot be a lack of. So know that life is on your side. Know that you cannot go wrong. Know that you cannot fail. Know that you cannot make a mistake. You can only learn. You can only expand. You can only notice that something's not working out for you and therefore fine-tune what it is that you do desire, what it is that is in alignment with who you truly are, what it is that is in alignment with the qualities you wish to exude, the vibrational attitude you wish to carry with you into everyday experiences. And then as you become of the chosen vibration through conscious, deliberate intent and practice, then you will start to see the reflections of that very effortlessly come into your life. And you will start to know more and more profoundly that the universe wants for you what you want for you. Make sense? Okay. So, sometimes people that are having a near-death experience, like quite literally near-death, where they don't quite experience that they're leaving their bodies, for sometimes that too, but just people where it seems obvious that they die. There's many reports of those people, in a way, becoming numb to physical reality for a moment, and experiencing a type of bliss or ecstasy. Even if physical pain is present in that death creation illusion in that moment. So in other words, they become oblivious even to the physical pain and it makes room for, it's like as if something takes over and it makes room for ecstasy. Why is that? What happens the moment that you are fairly convinced you are about to die? Can you imagine that for a moment? Just take a deep breath. Don't be afraid of exploring death in your mind. You won't attract it unless you're ready to actually die, which you are not, otherwise you'd be dead. So take a deep breath and just explore this as a tool to expand your awareness of what is true and to expand the experience of ease and relief. So what if you were to be in a scenario where you were convinced and you might even visualize something as gentle as just a meditation and you just know it's your time to go. It doesn't have to be that you're being tortured or thrown in front of a bus. It can be a very gentle death, but make it decisive in a way. So imagine what it would be like to simply sit on your meditation cushion and being the perfect enlightened monk that you are, you have total control over when you leave your body. But in a way you don't have full control. So what it feels like is that, uh-oh, my life has come to an end. Any type of scenario that feels kind to you in this particular setting, just imagine that for a moment. Imagine a kind death scenario. And imagine what flashes in front of your mind, what goes through your head the moment you're about to die. Unfinished business, perhaps. Things you still want to do that you didn't pay as much attention to. You want to prioritize certain things that you didn't give as much credit or value to. But now imagine that there's no way for you 
to do this anymore in this life and you're actually about to die in this visualization. So you're forced in a way to let go of, of all the things that you believe are unfinished business, are imperfect moments. But also, the ecstatic realization that there's nothing you have to do anymore. that it is finished, that all unfinished business is actually already finished. No way to get back into it. You are done. Imagine this until you feel relief, until you feel all resistance to life, all ideas of effort and doership, and judgment of yourself and others and how life is going for you until all that starts melting away and making room and space for this state of consciousness where you are in total non-resistance because you're not occupied with selfish, arrogant thoughts. Since there's no more use for you to think that you know better than life itself, suddenly the effort and strive disappears. And the ecstasy of spirit starts to enter your being, starts to enter your body even, your mind. Your mind's eye is cleansed and you see the perfection, the completion of your life as it is. See how perfect you've already been doing. See how complete of an experience, of an experiment, of a play, of a learning experience this has already been. And in a way, be prepared, be ready to say goodbye to your life. Goodbye to your story. Most of all, be prepared to say goodbye to your resistance and your arrogance. And to think that something is not perfect is arrogance. To think that something is not yet complete is arrogance. To think that there's something left for you to do is arrogance. To believe you're not yet good enough, you've not yet achieved the sinless state is arrogance. And now all of this does not matter any longer. Your only option at the moment of death is to continue to fight or surrender completely all arrogance that you have developed over the years. All arrogance, all strive. Let all strive disappear. Let all sense of incompleteness disappear. Let all sense of doership and what remains to be done disappear. Let all to-do lists disappear. Let all problems fade into nothingness, into complete ecstatic union with spirit. Seeing from the bigger picture that this was a perfect experiment and you succeeded. If you did not succeed, you would not yet be dying. But since you are dying, feel the completeness of your story as it is already with all of its perceived imperfections, with all of its perceived incompletenesses, with all of its perceived flaws. But see how, from a bigger perspective, perfection and completeness includes imperfections and incompletenesses. And so there's total joy and relief and love, bittersweet love, which then turns into purely sweet ecstasy when you give into it. It's the bittersweetness of seeing that you are a fuck up and it's totally okay. We've all been fucking up all the time and it's totally cool. It was part of the plan all along. It was part of the calculation of this experiment. It was not unexpected that you were to make what humans call mistakes. 
So see from a bigger, more inclusive picture, as if you are the bigger sphere that includes all the smaller spheres and stories and appearances of life. You are that infinite vast sphere of consciousness itself, which perceives the whole play of this human life with all of its flaws and fallacies and lies and little incompletenesses here and there, all over the place. And see that actually from this bigger perspective, that was all part of the experiment. That was all part of the journey, that was all part of the unique theme of expressing yourself, expressing consciousness in a particular way. Everything incomplete about you, the human, is actually part of a bigger picture of completeness. And at the moment of your death, you will see this, but you can see this now. That's why some people are in ecstasy the moment they think they're actually about to die. Because there's complete surrender of all resistance and arrogance. They let go of thinking that they have things left to do. If there's no more things you can do, what will your attention turn to? Either panic and despair, or total, fuck it, I did whatever I could. And it's actually quite perfect as it is. It's actually quite amazing as it is. It's actually quite rich with experiences as it is. And without all of those fallacies and flaws, how rich of an experience would this life have really been? Would it really have offered as much of a richness and completeness without those incompletenesses than it has now? So see the perfection of your life, see the perfection of your imperfections, see the completeness of your mistakes. They're all adding to the bigger expression of life. They're all adding to the expansion of the universe in a unique way. And the one blinks neither at the light nor the dark, neither at success or failure. It embraces all as an expression of its infinite possibilities. Know this, feel this, and let go of all stress and strive and ju judgment and blame. And feel total self-love for you as your higher self always already has and will because it cannot see imperfection in you. It cannot perceive lack. Its vision has become that much closer to the perfect vision of all that is. So higher self, higher consciousness sees everything as abundant reflections of infinity, as abundant expressions of perfection. Everyone, yourself and others and your partners and your friends, and your family and everyone on this planet included, is essentially perfectly playing its part and adding to a bigger sphere of wholeness that is already fundamentally complete and established, yet chooses to express and explore and experience itself in all these infinite ways. But take a deep breath and give up your arrogance that you think you know how things should be. Give up the arrogance, cleanse your brain, cleanse your vision from flaw and see only perfection because there is only complete perfection. That does not mean you won't learn, that does not mean you don't have desires or preferences, that does not mean you continue to expand upon your life and how you desire it to manifest. But you will do so from a space of ease, from a space of surrender, from a space of not resisting the perfection that's already here, all inclusive of all times, of all spaces, of all dimensions, of all creations, of all desires, of all items, of all units, of all measurements of space-time, of all relationships, of all humans, of all experiences whatsoever. This is all part of the bigger wholeness that is the all-inclusive perfect now. Already here, already established, already accomplished. You are already perfect. You are already beyond time. Your life is already free of guilt, absolutely worthy of whatever it is that inspires you most. Feel amazing about yourself by simply no longer having an arrogant stance on what should be and when it should be. Free yourself from the perception of time and become one with the timeless point of view, 
which is not so much a point of view as it is the view that includes all points of a view. It's the view itself, it's the consciousness itself that is the timeless. So when you are in the state of the timeless, such as at the moment of your death, this choice is given to you, but it is given to you every second of this life. So now that you have a visualization of your death, an imagination of what would it be like if I were to die right now, if this was my last two breaths, what would you do with your last two breaths? Would you struggle? Would that make sense? Would you fight it? What if there was no other way but to surrender or panic? To fight and believe that you know what should be, I should not die yet, I have not completed this yet, I haven't built up my finances yet, my pension isn't complete yet. I still have to call my health insurance company. I still have to take care of my kids because they can't live without me. I still have to love my partner, otherwise he or she won't know that she is worthy of life. Will you have all these arrogant stances and feel panic and feel distress and feel struggle? Or will you burn through all of that in the time frame of two breaths as you remember that there is no way out? And that all that remains to be done is a give up. Give up. But give up everything, including cynicism, including fear, including pessimism, including lack and limitation and worry and concern. Give up all resistance. Give it all up. Realize that you don't know how life should manifest. You only know that you ever tried your best and that your best is perfect. Feel the love that starts to pour through you as in those last two breaths you completely surrender your arrogance. You completely give up the thoughts that think they know what this is all about. Total surrender of the ego effect. The death of the assumed identity. And now imagine, now that you're dead, bye-bye, now that you're died, have a view of the universe, view the cosmic play of all that is, all the parallel infinite dimensions and realities. Visualize them. Visualize what this cosmic experience would look like without you. Feel what space feels like now that you're dead. Now that there is nothing for you to do. Now that there is nothing asked or requested of you. Now that the small you has disappeared altogether. What does the cosmos feel like? What does it look like? What is the perfection of the play that will continue to go on forever and ever and ever in a timeless state of self-exploration? What does it feel like without your arrogance in it, without your struggle and self-judgment in it, without your blame and sense of I'm not worthy present, without it present, in the absence of all of your resistance, what does this universe feel like? Without thinking you know what's best for you or anyone else, or the state of the world, or the children in Africa, or the slaves, or your bank statement. Without any arrogance whatsoever, what does this universe feel like? What does this moment, this timeless moment that contains all that can be, what does it look like? If not perfect, if not unconditionally loved and complete as it is. Even in 
its infant stages. This universe, as it continues to learn and grow and expand upon the different ways in which it experiences itself, is already essentially complete and the vastness of all that it can be is already accomplished. The one infinite creator is not concerned. It is not worried. It does not fret. It does not judge. It does not perceive lack, sin, guilt, shame, mistakes. It only ever sees that all of itself in its already accomplished state is only ever expressing and exploring and growing older into building new relationships from more points of view within its infinite expression of oneness. But how perfect all this is without your arrogance. Now re-include your arrogance and see how perfect that is as well. See how perfectly complete your arrogance is. See how perfectly innocent the thought I really need to do this, otherwise I'm less worthy of love, is. See how beautiful, how pristine, how vibrationally awake and clear and in alignment with unconditional love, the thought, I need to get this done, is. I need to apologize for this. I need to be careful not to impose upon anyone, is. I need to not be myself, otherwise other people will be insecure around me. How perfect is that arrogance? How perfect is the arrogance of thinking, I'll continue to live my life in a small way, so I won't stand out and I won't risk being judged by other eyes, by other brains, by other cellular life forms. How perfect that arrogance is to think that you know that what you think is actually true. How beautiful to be so hard on yourself. How perfect, how complete it is to feel so incomplete. This universal expression of oneness would not be complete without your arrogance. It would be all that it is without your arrogance. Since there cannot be any lack, your arrogance is completely included in the perfect picture of creation. It is one of the ways within which the one expresses itself, self-judgment, the illusion of lack and separation, not being loved, not being supported, the universe not being on your side even though it is you. All these illusions add to the expansion of creation, but see through the game of it, three, see through the illusion of it, and see that already everything is accomplished and you are in a perfect, timeless state of being all the time. This is your natural state of perfection. This is your natural timeless state of being already forgiven for everything you've ever done or not done, for everything you have yet to do or not yet to do for everything you're feeling and thinking and believing now, or not thinking and feeling and believing now. You see, every moment is a perfect addition to the perfect expression of all that is, and you cannot change how perfect it is. What you can do is panic and fret and think you know better, or surrender your thoughts and go with the flow. Tend to your vibration by feeling as good as you can, by knowing that life is on your side, by knowing that everything is infinite, by knowing that you are worthy because there is only one and you are its desired creation. You are its desired co-creation portion. You are completely, absolutely worthy of everything you desire and everything you desire is immediately activated within the field of your consciousness and it tries naturally, effortlessly, too attractive, bring into your life all the things that you are inspired to experience. The universe wants what you want for yourself. Because there is no difference between what the universe wants and what you truly desire. It is the same one flow. In fact, it is the universe, it is the greater self that makes you feel desire to begin with. And since this is not a cruel setup, and since the infinite one intelligence does not perceive any value in creating portions of itself that it then feeds desires that it then does not want to come true, it wants to express itself as efficiently as it can, 
And so it feeds you desires that you are able to attract and experience, but it needs to respect your free will. If you insist that you are unworthy, if you insist that this life is not complete, if you insist that something is missing and lacking from the now, you will attract more reflections that will only continue to anchor in the belief that everything is missing right now, that what you desire is lacking right now, that worthiness of what you desire is lacking right now. But if you give in, if you surrender your arrogance as if you already died, as if you don't know who you are, what you are worthy of, what you are capable of, as if you have no clue as to how limited or how expansive you actually are, in essence, in nature, in consciousness, in what you are. If you let go of those insistences, of those arrogant stances that only bring you down, that only make you feel stressed, that only make you feel separate from all that you are, that only incapacitate you within the illusion of expressing yourself. If you let go of that, if you give in to the abundance, to the worthiness that is awaiting you right here, right now, to the infinity that is surrounding you, that is penetrating you, that is you, right here, right now, already in timeless, complete perfection, then things will effortlessly show up on your radar without any work whatsoever, without any struggle whatsoever. The ease, the worthiness, the sense of belonging itself, the connection to who you are itself will bring these things to you. It does not require anything on your part other than to know your natural state of infinite worth. To feel that you are loved, to know that the universe is on your side, to know that there is only one and that all that you desire is what all that is desires of itself because there is no other. This is one complete unity expression. You cannot go wrong. You cannot make mistakes. You cannot be lacking anything. You cannot run behind on the schedule of all that is. You cannot run ahead of yourself either. Everything is in perfect timing. If you trust in this and enjoy the moment in the best feeling state that you have access to every moment, bumping it up, bumping it up, bumping it up, training it up, bumping it up, feeling better and better and better and more amazed and more humbled and more loved and more worthy and more receiving and more infinite, more at ease, more confident, more convinced, more cleansed, more resistance-free, more forgiven. If you feel all these things, then none of my other vibrational games apply to you anymore. You will see you will be convinced. You will see as life sees. You will act as life acts. You will feel as life feels. And you will bring into your experience what is already there to begin with anyway. But you stop resisting. That's all you do. So die before you die. So that you can actually enjoy this life before you die. And you can actually experience the fullness that you are before you die. You will anyway, when you die, to have the arrogance that you are die in front of your eyes and be cleansed with absolute knowingness of your worthiness. Because when you let go of all resistance, then the thought, I am unworthy, I am incapable, I am limited, needs to go as well. And as soon as it goes, your vision is cleansed and you see as your higher self has always already seen you. And you will feel as your higher self has always already felt you. And you will be present to yourself as your higher self has always already been present to you. And you will start supporting yourself effortlessly as your higher self has always already supported yourself effortlessly. Because you will see from the spacious spaciousness that you are instead of the contracted contraction that you think you should be. Stop fighting, stop struggling, stop trying. Fuck it. You're dead. When you die, you will know peace. When you die, you will know bliss. When you die, you will know joy. There is no other way. The only thing preventing all that you desire from entering your consciousness is the arrogant belief that you are separate, that you are lacking, that you are unworthy. If you let go of arrogance, you die to your greater self so that your greater self can start being present to your physical focus. And you will know all that I know. You will flow as I flow in your unique way you will bring into your life effortlessly all that you desire. But most importantly, you will feel loved. Most importantly, you will feel perfect. Most importantly, you will know the completeness that transcends all incompletenesses.
Are you ready to stop being arrogant? Are you ready to give in to unconditional worthiness? Are you ready to receive the blinding glare of the light that comes with infinite worth? Are you ready to be blinded? Blind to this world and awake to the spirit by letting go of the arrogance you thought you had to assume, you had to build up around you in order to be good enough? Are you willing to know that you are good enough as you are right this second? You cannot change this timeless moment. So if you really believe you're not worthy right now, you better stop working at it because you never will be. Because it's the same moment. A thousand years from now, after all the hard work, after all the redeeming qualities that you've built up, the timeless moment of this now will still feel like the timeless moment of this now. So you are doomed to fail if you believe that you are unworthy of unconditional love and joy and desires being fulfilled all over the place, all around you, all within you, all throughout you. So give up. The only thing that can ever die is your arrogance. The only thing that can ever die is your belief in being disconnected. Let your illusion of disconnect die so that connection can become so obvious to you that it will teach you everything you want to know. Die before you die. Total let go. You know nothing. John Snow. You know nothing. But you knew, do know what remains when you let go of thinking you know better than the Creator itself. That's when you'll find love instantaneously. It's when you'll feel your infinite worth well up like a fountain, like a geyser contained by your arrogance. It's been waiting to burst out through your eyes, through your ears, through your pores. It's been wanting to be experienced and tasted and applied to your physical focus in a myriad of ways that inspire you. This infinite worth has always wanted to be utilized by you. How do you utilize infinite worth? By feeling it at the core of your heart, at the core of your being. By feeling into the timeless infinite perfection that you are, that you cannot improve upon, but you can expand through and with. And you can be an example of, and you can be a statement of, to all the rest of yourself. But this geyser of infinite love has been wanting to come forth. You have been separating yourself. You have been attaining the impossible. You have been maintaining the impossible, which is to believe that you are disconnected. When it's so obvious from every other molecular, atomic point of view of creation that you are so inseparable from all that you are, that you cannot possibly be lacking anything whatsoever, let alone the capacity to experience the experiences you desire to experience. Let it flow into your being. Let it come into your consciousness by surrendering your arrogance, by surrendering mommy and daddy in the form of your own mind. They most of all don't know anything, even less than you do. But 99% of your mind consists of daddy and mommy and friends and media and external influences that you did not come here to express that you did not come here to reflect, that you did not come here to become an embodied creation of. You came here to bring in something new and have only 1% recognition, acknowledgement of the way things are, and to bring in 99% of conscious deliberate focus from spirit into this realm of the physical focus. In order to continue to do that, you need to know your infinite worth. You need to relax. You need to melt into worthiness. You need to melt the barriers surrounding 
your infinite geyser of abundance. You need to let that melt. You need to stop fighting yourself. You need to start swimming upstream. You need to start going with the flow and trusting that your vibration is already taken care of. All you need to know is that you and everything you desire and everything that you truly are are already one being. You're already loved. You're already complete. Let your arrogance disappear. It has never served you for even a second. And all the while you've thought that it served you, that you knew what you were talking about, that you knew how life worked, that you knew how you should go about things, that you knew how you should feel when around other people, that you knew how you should act when around other people. You knew how you should think in order to be loved. All of these arrogant stances are keeping that which is natural out of your view. You have created an isolated corner of arrogance that you think serves you well, but has never served you for even a second. Let go of self-judgment. Let go of believing and feeling you're not yet enough. If you can do just that, you can let go of the arrogance by seeing that it has never served you and it never will. Therefore, it's a futile thing to maintain. And it makes no sense whatsoever. It's dumb. It's just stupid. It's retarded. It serves no purpose. It has no intelligence. All this while, you've been trying so hard to not be the stupid one to not stand out as the stupid one. And all this while you've been the stupid one. Joke's on you. Stop being stupid by trying so hard not to be. Be more stupid so that you're actually becoming less stupid and more intelligent. Let life flow through you a little bit more. Become more organic. Become more like a plant, like a tree, like a flower. Become more organic. Become more natural. Become more allowing. Become more trusting. You have always been taken care of, but not by your arrogance, not by the things that you picked up along the way, not by what your parents taught you. None of that has kept you safe over the years or protected. All of it has kept you stupid only. Stop the stupidity. Embrace the validity of your being. It's not that hard. It's the easiest thing you can do. All you need is to be willing to be done with the stupidity that has kept you small and in pain and protected. But you see, to protect yourself is the pain. To manage your life is the struggle. To control your future prevents it from blossoming. Stop being stupid. Give yourself a break. Try it out. If it doesn't work for you within the time span of 48 hours, I will resign from whatever this is that I'm doing. And you can be right and continue to be arrogant. And I will happily depart since I've already died many times anyway, it will come as no surprise or challenge for me. But give it a try. And I guarantee you that if you give it a try, or in a way you stop trying so hard altogether, and you just let it be done for you, just relax. Just relax. Just relax for two to five lifetimes and see what happens. <laughs> Within 48 hours, you will achieve miraculous manifestations and you will be absolutely amazed and yet at the same time not at your capacity to attract what you desire. How? You might ask yourself, 
How did I do that? But you won't care because that's another way to struggle. That's another way to build up arrogance and protection and try to maintain it for your future. But you see, there you go again, being stupid. Make id. Make your only effort to feel no effort by knowing that all effort fails you. When you see very clearly in your conscious consciousness that all effort has only ever failed you, not passion, not inspiration, not motivation, not ambition even, not dreaming, not having visions, not being excited and in anticipation, but all effort, all feelings of struggle have only been you swimming upstream against your own current of abundance and freedom and joy and infinite worth. So let your only effort be, let your only maintenance be to not feel any control, to completely surrender all control and let the ease of the river of your higher self show you within a time span of 48 hours, confirm to you, prove to you, anchor into you, make you convinced of the fact that ease is the creator of what you want and struggle is the creator of what you do not want. Ease is the way to know yourself in ways that you want and desire to know yourself, expansive ways, and struggle and effort and self-judgment and blame and thinking you know so well what you should be thinking, feeling, what you should have done and felt only leads to the realizations of yourself that you don't want to experience, that do not serve you, that contract you, that keep you small, that keep you blind to the greater purpose that you have here. Simply by living moment to moment, you will explore more and discover more of who it is you actually are. Ironically, you have to give up wanting to know what it actually is. Not wanting to know, but trying to know. When you simply trust, when you simply trust in the natural timing of ease, when you trust in the power that is within the ease of being here now and maintaining only non-maintenance, efforting only to feel no effort, striving only to experience zero strife. When you let that ease take over, when you take over with ease, ease will take over your life and the manifestations that will be brought to you within the time span of even 48 hours will blow your puny little mind. And that's what you want. Because when you blow your puny little arrogant mind, you will know love. You will know infiniteness. You will know more of who you are. And you will know it in an instant. It will be simple. It will not be a process of endless, endless, endless self-discovering. Am I this? Am I that? Am I this? Am I that? Am I this? Am I that? Yes, that will continue to some extent because you will always learn more of how you wish to manifest yourself, but that's only on the relative plane. The absolute knowingness of who you are, which is unconditional light, which is infinite light, which is infinite worth, which is endless love, which is perfect forgiveness always, all the time, already accomplished here and now, Perfection, timeless perfection is what you are. You will know that without time. In that instant of total let go, when you die to yourself, when you die to the truth, when you give up what you think you know so well, which has never served you for even a second, you will know who it is that you are with no time between here and there, between knowing and not knowing, or not knowing and knowing. There will be no time. You will just know, you will feel. And through the feeling state of bliss, through the feeling state of liberation, through the experiential vibrational state of knowing the love light, the higher densities of love light that are innate to your spirit consciousness, instantaneously you will be unable to go back to your previous level of stupidity and you will be less and less stupid. More and more intelligent, more and more vibrant, more and more abundant, more and more living in ease, through ease, and by ease, generate a reality that matches the dreams that you knew you came here to create and mold out of this physical clay that we call physical energy, which it is not. It is an illusion. That's why it can change within the time frame of 48 hours. Give it a shot. See what it does. If you don't like it, let me know and I'll resign. Other people may not like you for it, but that's okay. <laughs> but before you make me resign, make sure that you do exactly as I said. Because it will work if you do exactly as I said. 
if you deviate, if you try to strive your way into ease, if you try to judge and blame yourself into self-love, then you will probably not see the results that I am talking about. But if you know that if you let your arrogance die completely and you just for 48 hours give life a chance to take care of your life for you, what can happen in 48 hours of not managing your life? What could possibly happen that would be so irreversible that you insist upon continuing to not serve yourself every second of every day by maintaining the arrogance that thinks it keeps you safe when it doesn't? See what happens when you stop keeping yourself safe for 48 hours. You'll feel so safe, you'll feel so protected, you'll feel so basked in the environmental energy that is the entirety of your body, not just the physical outline of your skin. But you will feel at one with the floor, you'll feel at one with the being that's standing in front of you, you'll feel at one with the partner that's abusing you, you'll feel at one with your parents, you'll feel at one with the dead, you'll feel at one with all that is. You feel good, you'll feel safe because you know this is your playground and all of it is your body. And if all of it is your body, then not a single part of your body can harm another part of your body. Your body is indestructible if all that is, is your body. If you assume that the body is what you carry with you right here, right now, within this physical skin, then yes, that can be harmed by other portions of your body. But you see, even when you're killed by another portion of your body, your body survives. Your body endures. What is your body? The body that you are is nothing but the expression of infinite, indescribable, non-physical consciousness. And in physical reality, that looks like your physical environment. That looks like the world. It looks like the universe. It looks like your personal life. It looks like every experience you've ever had. That is your body. You are not separate from the rest of your body. This is all inside of your sphere. This is all dreamed up by you inside of the sphere of your I am higher self consciousness and is generated only out of your higher self I am consciousness energy. There is no way around the fact that you're perfectly safe because everything that could ever potentially harm you is simply more of yourself. So when you give up protecting yourself, the vibration that you give off is ease, love, confidence, conviction, faith, trust. And life, your body, can only respond to that. Your environment, your circumstances, which is you, which is your energy, can only respond to that vibration with the reflection of peace, love, joy, and safety. And the sense of union with it. It will feel as if you are laying on your back in this oasis. The 60 by 60 foot oasis surrounded by palm trees and sand and there's no one around and there's no critters and there's no dangerous snakes in the water. There's nothing but crystal clear water and you can see through all of it and there's nothing hiding underneath that's potentially unsafe. There's no humans for miles and miles and miles around and you take a 15 minute break to lay in that pond in total confidence knowing that there's nothing that could ever hurt you in those 15 minutes. And you will feel that safe in every single experience of your physical life, in the busy streets of New York, or Boulder, or in nature, or when facing a bear, or when facing bankruptcy, or any other type of circumstantial disaster. Oh my God, life is so bad. <laughs> it's been so bad to me, and it continues to be so bad to me. I'm so stuck for years, I've been stuck because of the circumstances. Oh my God, my life is the most terrible. I've suffered the most of all human beings. I must be up there with the 1% of people that suffered the most. I'm so worthy of knowing what I'm talking about. My arrogance has been validated over the years. So let's continue to protect myself from what never ever happened to begin with. And can never happen because you are safe, because all that you experience is yourself. See, no more point in maintaining your struggle, your armor, your arrogance, your lack of beliefs. It will disappear. 
and you shall know unconditional love for yourself. Inclusive of all other beings. You will know the ultimate safety that can never be taken away. You will know the ground of being within which you will find infinite refuge from the seeming illusory dangers of physical reality. You will feel fine, safe underneath always. You will feel perfect, yet ready for more. Excited for more of this exploration of consciousness within time and space. But you will know underneath that you are the sphere, the timeless, spaceless sphere that surrounds the illusion of space-time exploration. So while you are anticipating and being excited for more of yourself to be made manifest in your consciousness, you know ultimately you are the timeless consciousness that does not change, that does not move, that's always safe, that is unconditional love, that's unconditionally bright, light, redeeming, and has already forgiven every single thought you've ever had, every single thing you've ever done, every single desire you've ever had. You are already redeemed. You are already liberated. You are already forgiven. You are already love and loved. You are already kept safe. Higher self does not need you to keep you safe. It's not out to punish you. It is not out to pinch you all the time. You are pinching yourself all the time. Stop pinching yourself and see what can happen in the next 48 hours. And report if you want on this little puny thing called Facebook. I have a I have a group there you can request to join if you aren't a part of it already. It's called Montenegro Masara's Teaching and Community. People share testimonies, ask questions, and support each other there. Or go to trinfinityacademy.com, sign up there, and go to the chat. But let each other know how ease is the creator of what you want, and how struggle is the creator of what you don't want. So prioritize the vibrational feeling that you have in this moment because it will determine the next few hours of your physical experience. That's how important this vibrational experience of this moment is. You are constantly creating your future. You cannot secure your future through control, but you can create your future and attract the future you desire through ease, through joy, through trust, through faith, through openness, through expansion, through love, through passion conviction, and the safety of your being. You're infinitely cradled. He never left the womb of consciousness. He never left the womb of your higher self. You've never left your mother. You've never left this infinite beacon of support that surrounds you, penetrates you, gives you life, and animates you to begin with. That which enables you to complain and fear and protect and be arrogant is the same energy that has kept you safe forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. Because there is no other. How can you not be safe if all there is is more of you, more of your higher self loving you? Die before you die. So that you can start to live before you die. deep breath and love yourself to death. Take another deep breath and love yourself to death. Let all resistance melt away. Let all sense of unworthiness slide off of you like Teflon. Take a deep breath and love yourself to annihilation so that what remains is the truth of your spirit, the obviousness of your infinite worth. One more deep breath, or as many as you like, and love yourself to ease. Death is ease. Struggle is death.
Don't do anything that does not feel good. Don't believe in anything that does not feel good. Don't think a single thought that does not feel good. Don't entertain a single belief that does not feel good. All that is arrogance. Anything that does not feel good is arrogance and only arises so that you can let go of it, not so that you can perpetuate it. When something arises that does not feel good, embrace it by feeling good about not feeling good because it's a signal that you are allowed. You are given full permission from the highest authority in the universe to let go of it safely. If something feels bad, it's higher self letting you know it's safe to let go of this thought. It's safe to let go of this belief. It's safe to not do this right now. You will create abundance by following the stream of ease. That's why it feels easeful. It's because it's abundant. And letting go of the stream of effort, which is not really a stream. It's holding on to the boulder in the stream, thinking that it's keeping you safe from the water. But all the time you're already wet anyway, so fuck it. Might as well go with the ride. Go with the flow, trust in the ease that is the vibration of now. Anything that does not feel good is giving you full permission to let go of the very thought, belief, or action that generated the not feeling good. This way you cleanse your misperception into alignment with your higher self and you become more enlightened. Ta -da! You become more awake. Ta -da! You feel more empowered. Ta -da! You feel more inseparable from all that is. Ta -da! You feel more timeless and eternal. Ta -da! All the things you desire are effortless and can be achieved completely and fully to the fullest of what's relevant for you to experience right now within the next 48 hours. The degree to which you are ready to trust is the degree to which you'll accelerate how deeply, how intimately you'll know your indestructible connection to your true self. How deeply do you dare to trust over the course of the next 48 hours? How bored to death are you with arrogance, thinking you know better than this infinite mystery that is all that there is? Are you keeping your molecules together, spinning on this earth that's going 1600 kilometers an hour, let alone the spinning motion of the galaxy? in relationship to the central sun of our galaxy. Are you doing all that? If so, go ahead and continue to be arrogant, because then you're right. If you do not keep your molecules together, every single nanosecond and every single billionth of a parallel reality that you move your consciousness into, if you are not the one actively consciously managing your breath, your heartbeat, your molecules somehow staying into place, your atoms moving in such a way that you can call it movement. If you are not doing that, if you are not managing the rotation of this Milky Way galaxy right now and all other infinite galaxies within this vastness of infinite exploration of the one, if you're not consciously maintaining that, then you're not consciously maintaining anything but the way that you feel and interpret all that has been created by your higher consciousness. So let your higher consciousness take care of you as well, as it takes care of the spinning of the galaxy. If it takes care of the spin of the galaxy and all the trillions of stars and planets and beings inside of even just this one puny little Milky Way galaxy, simultaneously holding that intelligence to all other galaxies out there, which are infinite in number, by the way, which also are just together, all together, one particular universe, but there's many alternate universes, infinite ones, in fact. If you are doing all that simultaneously in the now, if you are consciously already the all that is level of consciousness, if you're aware of all that there is and can be right here, right now, then be my guest and continue to be arrogant because you have all the rights to be and you should be sitting up here, not me. But since none of you are, consciously managing the intelligence of all that there is. Why do you not let that same power that manages galaxies take care of the simple thing such as what you want to do in life or how much money you want in your bank account or what type of an experience you want to have with other people or what vibrational attitude you want to experience 
or how much goodness you want to let come into your life. Because it must be so, so hard for the universe to create things through ease. Because it's so busy spinning galaxies. It must not have time for me. But are you upholding the structure of your atoms? Are you giving conscious shape to your physical body right now? If you've achieved that level of consciousness, if you've merged to that extent with your higher consciousness, your higher mind, then again, be my guest and be arrogant. It will serve you. But since we're not that intelligent yet, and we're on our way to becoming that intelligent, to retracing our steps all the way back to the infinite one, diminishing the distortion of the vibration of our personally asserted self and our true self, since we're still on that journey, that joyful exploration, that spiritual path, if you will, let us be humble and let in the goodness that we are. Let let infinite intelligence give us what we want because it, we're worthy of it and we desire it because it desires it for itself through all portions of itself that's how it attracts what it wants remember infinite worth it's logical you're not keeping your body together right now. You're not spinning out of control. Your trillion of cells are not flying off into space. You're not managing gravity. You're not managing the beating of your heart. You can, but you're not, which means you're not that intelligent and vast yet in your conscious consciousness, which means it's relevant for you to explore this level of consciousness as an addition to the universe. So it's irrelevant for you to be where you're at but then let the higher consciousness take care of all that you are and all that you want. And you cannot do that if you really believe that you have to take care of yourself through carefulness, through making concessions, through signing contracts and agreements doing something a little bit for someone here so that they will do something a little bit for you here. What a puny way to live. Puny God. Don't be a puny God. Be a trusting God. You are a God, but you're creating puniness. You're creating a tiny little contracted little life. And then you wonder why or oh, why you don't want to be here anymore. Why do I feel so bad? Oh, why isn't life on my side? Because you're not on your side. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you got to be on your side because you see, you're so unconditionally loved. You're so loved without conditions. You're so supported without conditions that you're absolutely supported in all that you believe. So if you believe you're separate and unworthy, then all that it can give to you is reflections that reflect that. That is how unconditionally supported you are in what you believe. So you have to get on your side. Your free will is paramount to the Creator because that's how it created you. It created you in the image of free will. You are the free agent. So it is your responsibility to start taking care of yourself by no longer believing that you have to take care of yourself. But trust instead, have faith instead, feel expanded instead. Have conviction in the goodness of all that there is that's flowing into your being right now, that's keeping yourselves together as we speak, that you don't have to manage. There's so much else, in fact, there's everything else that you don't have to manage. All you have to manage is feeling good. This is the only task you've been given that makes sense as a human being is to feel as receptive, as receiving of infinite abundance, as allowing as you can be as trusting as you can be. That is your only job as a human being that makes sense for you to have. Should be on everyone's job description as the only thing that's sensible. Feel good. Feel good. It gets the job done. Feeling good gets the job done. I don't know how, 
but I do know why. Because this is a singularity. This is one being. And if there's one being that creates infinite points of view of itself, it is not out to hurt these portions of itself. Who here enjoys grabbing a hammer and smashing their toes every day? Do you do that? Do you do it even with your little toe, the, the smallest toe that you have? Do you do it with the smallest toe? Do you smash it? Does that give you joy? What makes you think that the one being deprived of joy, gets joy, extracts joy from punishing itself? Would infinite intelligence do that? Would it even conjure up the idea of unworthiness? Would it hurt itself, keep itself separate and contracted, and give itself everything it does not want? If there's a one being, would it give that to itself? Would it say, well, I want this, but what I really want is to not give that to myself. You see, that's why it's so safe to relax. That's why it's so safe to let down your armor and be completely exposed so that you can know that vulnerability is a myth. Oh, let's be vulnerable. No, you can't. You can expose yourself to all of yourself, but vulnerability has never existed. It would imply that you can encounter something that's not yourself. In a singularity, there is no room for self-hatred. There's no room for separation in a singularity. As vast as the one is, it lacks room for separation. There's just not enough room in infinity to include separation. Because it would need another room. And there's only one room, so that's impossible. Separation means there's two rooms. But the one infinite vastness is too infinite, too big to generate two rooms. You can't do it. It would mean that their infinite one is not infinite. Only then can you make room for another room. But since the infinite is all inclusive, you cannot have another infinity. By definition, if the infinite one is infinity, you cannot have room for another infinity because that would mean that the first infinity was not infinite. But since the first infinite is truly infinite, beyond our ability to comprehend or even imagine, there is no room for another. There is no room for another in the infinite one that is all that it is. There is no room for another infinity. Infinity has no room for anything but itself. That's why it's infinite. No. Obvious, right? It's so logical to be enlightened. It's fun when the brain suddenly starts making sense out of things. I was like, oh hey, that's actually quite logical. Let's call it enlightenment. <gasps> oh, teacher, oh, oh guru, oh, oh my god, what have you realized that I cannot realize? <sighs> Logic. Clear-headedness. Observing. And noticing, observing, and noticing, until you come to your senses. Until you align what you think you see with how things actually work. When you empty out your arrogance, so that infinite abundance and clarity of vision and accuracy of perception can fill in the blanks. You just need to be blank. And by blank, I mean free, spacious, ease, not worry about the way things work. Just be in the joy that you want to be in. Be in the ease you want to be in, and it gets the job done. It gets all jobs done. So change your job description to just this, and show it to your employer. I changed my job description. What do you think? It used to be a list of 25 things, but now it says, feeling good, smiley face. <laughs> I think it will get more shit done. <laughs> yeah. 
And if he or she does not agree, let them fire you. Say, this is all I want to do from now on. Do you agree? Will you pay me for this? In fact, I think I'll get so much more done. I kind of demand double the salary you've been giving me. What do you think? Sounds like a good plan, huh? If they disagree, let them fire you. And bring it to every other interview of any job that inspires you. Here, this is what I want to do for you. Feeling good. If someone hires you when they see that, you know you found the right employer. And otherwise, start something for yourself and quit your job. It gets the job done, but we don't trust that anymore. But if you give yourself 48 hours to let go of all tension, to disown all thoughts that make you feel bad, to let go of all struggling ideas, just insist upon non-insistence. Be convinced that everything is created for you and you can simply let go. Oh, a little tension, but nope. I'm going to spend 48 hours in an absolutely clean state where I don't believe in anything, especially nothing that feels bad. If it feels amazing, then it's not even so much a belief, it's simply an aligning of perceptions. And sure, it forms its own belief system because that's what structures reality, but really at the core of it, you're not under the illusion of believing in something. It's just a way of seeing life. It's a very organic, flowing state of being. It's where your point of view is very malleable and it's in alignment with some of the principal vibrational truths of existence. You want to be in that state. And the only way you can be effortlessly, naturally convinced in that state is if you let go of anything that pops up that feels bad. Oh. Just don't even go into it for the next 48 hours. Don't even apply anything that I've told you before, unless you feel it's really, really relevant for something that comes up for you. But as a general rule for the next 48 hours, and you can extend that to next Monday if you want to, when as soon as a thought comes up that feels bad, that feels like a struggle, that feels like it comes from you thinking you know what's going to happen and what you need to do in order for it to happen smoothly and in order for you to keep yourself safe because you're managing all the molecules, so you should also manage your job. Just instantaneously remember that it has never served you. It is rooted in stupidity, not intelligence. Contraction, not infinite abundance of all that you desire. And then choose the opposite. And by simply already deciding to let go of it at the first moment you notice it, that already puts you in the state of abundant joy. Just that. You don't even have to remember the way the universe actually works. Unless you go down the rabbit hole too much of the negative thought, then you need to sort of retrace your steps by acknowledging everything that goes well, what you truly are, what you know that is true about the universe, that you are supported. Look at the obviousness of how this is already created for you. Notice the obviousness of how things pop up when you align yourself with your true vision. Then you have to like retrace those types of acknowledgments. But if you catch it in the early stages of spinning out of control into the negative of arrogance, of thinking you know better than the flow of ease, if you catch yourself right there, you're instantly still in the space, in that responsive trampoline mode where you can bounce back up into alignment, into ease. Oh yeah, I remember, I almost went down the rabbit hole, but it's so joyful to see that I didn't. And if I did, it's also joyful to see that I did. Because it would also be arrogant to say that it was bad of you to go down the negative spiral. So if you got lost for a couple hours and you're like, shit, I'm depressed again. What did I do? What did I do wrong? That's another thought that is negative in nature, that's arrogant in nature. So let that one go and remember that it's amazing that you went down into a spiral of depression for two hours without noticing. That it's such an abundant experience of perfection. That you're already perfect. And then you can still use the trampoline to bounce back up into alignment. Always feel good. Whenever you catch yourself in a conscious moment, let your response to what you have caught, the fish that you have caught, let your response be joy, confidence, gratefulness, thankfulness, happiness that you have seen this, humility, that you can now choose your way once again. 
Always be grateful for the fact that you're having a moment of consciousness, even if what triggered the moment of consciousness was a negative feeling. Aren't you happy that you're conscious again? That is due to the negative feeling. Don't be arrogant by judging it. Be grateful. It showed you to be conscious once again. What more do you want? Make sense? So constantly jump back up into infinite worth, infinite love for yourself, infinite ease, and remembering that ease creates what you want. Somehow, magically, just let it do its job. Being in ease will attract everything you need to get done and do and have created for yourself. You can just follow your ease, do what feels easeful, think what feels easeful, and even extend that to doing what feels blissful, thinking what feels blissful, believing what feels blissful, seeing in ways that feel joyful and blissful and ecstatic and euphoric. And then somehow magically, without your arrogance included, without you having protected yourself for the time spent of 48 hours, without having thought you knew better than the mechanics that keep every spiraling galaxy of billions of stars and beings together. You not questioning that authority, simply trusting that the way it communicates to you what is the most efficient way for you to go about things is what feels the easiest, the most joyful, the most pleasurable, the most exciting. And as you follow that joy, you follow that bliss, of course, with honoring your integrity, but truly following your true joy will never dishonor someone else, will never deprive someone else of what they want and desire. So following your true joy will always naturally, organically maintain integrity and balance. So you don't have to worry too much about that. Worry more about finding out what truly gives you joy in this moment. What is truly in alignment with who I am? What feels completely expansive and holistically integral to who I am as a being? What do I really want to do? What's really valuable and beautiful to me right now? What do I really want to think that brings me joy? Does this thought bring me greater joy? Or does this thought bring me greater joy? I choose the thought that brings me the greatest joy and then suddenly I notice I want to go for a walk. So then I go for a walk and then I meet this person that wants to do everything for my business that I couldn't do myself. But if I would have stayed home thinking that my job description consisted of those 25 things, I would never have met this person. I would still be miserable and I would be still be creating more work for myself out of working, out of working, out of working, hopefully to get to the end of work. But being in a state of work or effort only ever attracts more of itself. Everything you do and think and believe and feel attracts more of its own nature, like to like. So having chosen the most blissful, joyful thought and then having been inspired to go for a walk, you suddenly, very effortlessly, you didn't do shit. No effort involved, no hard work involved, no struggle, no self-judgment, no pain, no gain, ideas. Just a walk through the park because you enjoy being with the leaves that the wind so magically allows to dance. And so you enjoyed this walk the nature and you met this person somehow. Oh, and they have a dog as well, so you started chatting. Oh, what kind of dog is that? Oh, is it a mix? Oh, yeah, it's a mix. Ah. What do you do? Well, here's my business card. Oh, awesome. Well, I would really love to uh, do this or that. And somehow, magically, you attract everything into your life that needs to get done. I'm not saying you will never, ever put your hand on a pen and write something yourself. I'm not saying you won't be doing anything, but it will be out of flow. It will be out of joy. It will be out of inspired, effortless, spontaneous, Obvious action. Yes, of course. Let me do this right now. Let me write this email. Da, 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 da. Enter. What is the best thinking? What's the best feeling thought I have access to right now? Great. Okay. What does it inspire me to take action on? No, nothing. It just wants me to sit here for a moment and have another wonderful thought. Oh, great. Wow. This universe really is amazing. Wow. It really allows everything to spin in orchestration, in perfect completeness. Oh, shit. Before you know it, you're in a spontaneous half an hour of meditation without having watched the clock and waken up and do your meditation every day. You just spontaneously enter the meditative state and your guru approves of you and you've had these states of realization without even trying to attain it, without even studying the Yoga Sutras or the Bhagavad Gita. It just naturally happened because you were in such a state of joyful absorption that it took care of everything because you were not being arrogant. And when you're not being arrogant, the geyser of true wisdom and true joy and true love and true abundance and everything you can ever possibly desire and so much more that you're not aware of yet because of your arrogance will flow through you effortlessly with ease, with joy and fulfill you. And it will be a perfect, complete reality and there will be not anything left out mistaken anything to regret or be guilty about 
that will be obvious because it is so obvious to the Creator. If you line yourself, align yourself with the way the Creator sees life, which is ease and joy and self-love and everything you desire is its own desire, so honor what you desire. Otherwise, you're not honoring the union that creates all that there is. So honor what you feel, honor what you want, honor what feels amazing and bump it up and bump it up and bump it up and bump it up. How? Through effortlessness, through joy, through trust, through greater conviction, greater conviction that life is on your side, greater conviction that everything is already in your field, already accomplished. You don't need to do anything, anything, but feel good. Be receptive. Allow expansion. Love yourself. Fuck it. Give it a shot. For the first time ever, give it a shot. For the next 48 hours, see what happens. See what can happen. Let it blow your puny little mind into oblivion. That is to die to your greater self so that you can be reborn and live in joy, love, and abundance, and infinite generosity, infinite freedom. Class dismissed. I love you very much. And I'm done with this meeting. And so are you all. So enjoy your night. <laughs>